you. Glenview Capital's Larry Robbins has taken the stage to present his best idea. I talked to you about Let's why we should in. be short big pharma and medium pharma on pricing concerns. And I'm going to talk to you about uh, shorting 3M and Kimura's on PFAS, which stands for per and polyfluoral alkali substances. Uh, the last time I will say that, I will now use PFAS because I'm good with numbers but not so good with words. At the end of the story, I'm also going to tell you about an incredible young man named Maurice Campbell, a hockey player who's using things he learned from his family and Horace Mann uh, in the North Jersey Avalanche to kick cancer's butt as he goes through his battle. So I can't wait to talk to you about that, but first, let's pay some bills and do the real content, right? <clears throat> when analyzing stocks, you need to look at the political risk. You need to figure out who's the decision maker. Stocks that have uh, been sensitive to Medicare for all or the concept of mandatory Medicare have gone straight backwards since February. However, you need to understand that it's not just a presidential candidate or a president that can make it happen. You need both chambers of Congress, including likely 60 members of the Senate, right, and the president all to agree to it, right? The odds are extremely low. We'll talk about that. Whereas in pharma, because of something called the CMMI that was passed under the ACA, right, in pharma, the president can act unilaterally to reduce drug pricing, and in fact, uh, President Trump is attempting to, and regardless of who the presidential candidate is or president is in 2021, we believe all will seek to act. Finally, uh, we think PFAS makers uh, are ethical companies, but they made a product that causes harm, and they're going to have to pay for uh, the remediation of that. Uh, what can we see? We can see that the companies, including the HMOs and the hospitals that we own are growing and growing rapidly. We see the stocks have fallen. That creates the compressed spring and opportunity for you all. Whereas while the uh, pharma shorts and Triple M and, and Kimura's have done admirably or okay in the, in the market, they're facing some very, very significant liabilities. What is mandatory Medicare, or what is uh, Medicare for all? It means that you will replace current Medicare. It means you will replace current Medicaid. It means you will eliminate private insurers. It means that 82% of the country that has chosen private insurance will no longer have that right or access to their own insurers. And instead, we're going to spend 30 trillion plus, right? And how are we going to pay for it? We don't know. Who's the single payer of single payer health care? You are. It's the taxpayer. Federal government will be the single allocator. When you pose it like that, it doesn't sound quite as good. So don't pay attention to the polling numbers. Is Medicare for all good? Sure. Everybody should have health care. Medicare for all isn't universal health care. It's eliminating what we have in favor of something new that probably won't work. What's broken? There's still 28 million Americans that don't have health insurance. It'll shock you to know that half of them actually have access today. They just haven't signed up. Five and a half million are eligible for Medicaid. They just haven't done the, the paperwork. And another 10 million at a cost of no more than $100 a month are eligible for Obamacare exchanges, and they choose not to pay for it because people were against the individual mandate. People don't like when things are mandatory in the U.S. How is it going to happen that you're going to have mandatory Medicaid? What is working? There's 85% customer satisfaction. What would Glenview do if we were king for a day? We're not going to be king for a day. There's plenty of good ideas that can uh, eliminate this coverage gap. We do think it's a laudable goal that all Americans have access to affordable health care insurance. How could you get Medicare for all passed? Democrats have to win the White House in, 20, in 2020. For the purpose of this room, we'll just say, hey, that's 50-50. But only three of the candidates, which have a collective 28% share of, uh, of, of, of voters, of early voters, are really supportive of Medicare for all, right? And then you have to flip the Senate from 53-47 to 50-50. And then you got to get over the fact that 15 senators that are Democrats currently oppose Medicare for all. And then, of course, you need to get past the bird rule, which says if we're going to spend money, 60 senators need to approve it. And last time I checked, $30 trillion is spending money. Right? Who does not seem excited about Medicare for all? Three of the top four Democrats uh, in, in, the, in the House of Representatives, as well as three of the four key chairs. Here's their quotes. The idea that overnight you're going to take 20% of the American economy and transform it like the DMV or other or the VA hospital system and transform it, that's not really realistic, right? It hasn't been good service, right? If you guys are political wonks, you'll know that 34 Senate seats come up in 2020, 
10 of them are considered quote unquote contested, one of which is the Alabama seat that was lost in the Roy Moore scandal. Alabama, last time we checked, is a pretty red Republican state. That means that you basically have to go seven and two if you're a Democrat in the next election in contested races. And by the way, that includes the fact that three people who are running again won by 8% or more. Those are very, very tall odds. The high, high likelihood is that whether, no matter what your affiliation, the betting odds are that the Senate is going to stay Republican, right? There's 15 uh, Democratic senators that all oppose Medicare for All, right? Medicare for All insurance takes away insurance from 180 million people, right? The number one job of an elected official is to get reelected. You try not to infuriate 180 million people that in general like what they have. That's from a Democratic senator uh, from Colorado, right? Well, maybe even if you get that, you could say, all right, well, if you get past the 15 senators and you win four seats net of Alabama and, and, and get to 50-50, then you got to get past how do you need 60 votes in the Senate. Well, even uh, Bernie Sanders' presidential candidate, who's the, one of the principal architects of Medicare for All, says, no, I'm not that crazy about getting rid of the filibuster, which is what you need to get to 60 votes, right? In the ACA, which was the only revolutionary uh, health care legislation that we've had in the last decade, Right? Uh, most industry groups were actually for it because with good conscience, it's a good idea that all Americans have access to health insurance. When we look at Medicare for all today, literally everyone is opposed. Right? What happens if I'm a pollster and I say, hey, do we like Medicare for all? Sure. Right? What if that means you eliminate your private insurance? Well, maybe. Right? If it requires you to pay more taxes, now we're starting to cut in our pocketbooks. Right? Threatens the current Medicare program, now seniors really don't like it. Right? And leads to delays in getting people treatments. It will take three times as long to get an MRI in a single payer system like the UK as it takes in the US. How frustrated have we all been that we can't get our kids or our parents an MRI in a reasonable period of time, try tripling that weight. That's a lot of calls to mom to explain it. Right? What about, hey, a uh, single payer means that all of for-profit health care, including insurers, disappears. Except for single payer in Canada, in which 67% of people still have private insurance. Or South Korea at 77. Or Japan at 90. Even though we're not single payer, only 82% of people have private insurance today. 18% are through Medicare and Medicaid. We're kind of in line with the world already. Right? What's the uh, customer satisfaction scores? They're pretty high. People who have insurance have an 85 plus percent positive rating about their insurance. What about states? States have an ability to decide, do we want to run this ourselves or do we want to outsource it to these big bad companies known as for-profit insurers? Pennsylvania is saving $5 billion over 10 years. Ohio is saving 17%. With how stretched state budgets are and voters are and we really need higher taxes as middle income Americans are trying to make ends meet. Isn't it a good idea to save money rather than to spend more money? What does that lead to in terms of our investment decisions? It means that right now as a result of the fact that the earnings are up and the stock prices are down, multiples are compressed. Currently we're trading at about 73% relative multiple to the market, right? Where have they traditionally traded when there's not a uh, political crisis? They traditionally traded between 90 and 110% relative multiple, which means over a two year period, you like you to make 50 to 85% if you buy the group and we like uh, certain stocks better than the group. Well, gee, how are the companies doing right now? Well, we just finished the first quarter reporting period. Cigna, Humana, United Healthcare, Anthem, Centene, all companies that we own in our portfolio. They all beat the first quarter. They all raised guidance. How did they beat and raise? Because they did a better job of using innovation and modern tools and scale to reduce the medical cost trend, which ultimately will be passed along next year in the form of uh, uh, lower premiums or premiums that increase at a slower rate than they otherwise would. As we look at target prices, we think that these stocks should be trading at 16 to 20 times earnings in line with the 90 to 110 percent market multiple. That leads to some fancy uh, upside. Uh, Cigna is certainly our favorite among those group. What about hospitals? Wall Street said, well, gee, if you get rid of commercial pay and commercial pay pays more for a hospital than Medicare or Medicaid, then isn't that bad for hospitals and they're all going to go out of business? All 5,300 hospitals in the United States, they're suddenly going to go out of business. Right? And so, okay, well, the HCA, they had great numbers, they raised numbers, uh, they're generating great cash flow. By the way, HCA bought back 16% of their stock in the third quarter of 2011 at net $12 a share in net of dividends. They're going to earn more than $12 a share next year. 
right? And yet, hey, we got to be careful because, hey, aren't they going to get rid of commercial insurance? Well, if you get rid of commercial insurance, you also get rid of bad debt expense, and you have increased coverage, and a private market will emerge just like it has in every other single-payer system. So we don't think it's, even if you get through the 0.002% that Medicare for All happens, we still don't think hospitals are that bad off. But what really happens, what really happens is that out of those 5,300 hospitals, there's 1,600 of them today who are community hospitals, who are not-for-profits, who lose money, who will get driven out of business. And by the way, there's 12 hospitals in every congressional district on average, and by the way, they're the second largest employer through the district, and reimbursement to hospital procedures have gone up for next year as passed by this Congress by 25 to 3 percent because they are so vital to engines and growth. Hospitals are not under attack. Hospitals are a wonderful place to invest.